So how to, how to conduct an effective job interview meeting. You've uh, been tasked to find a new employee at your office, and well, now you got to find a new employee. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of those techniques that you can use to have a very successful interview session. And do it right now. You know, it's uh, just as nerve-wracking for the interviewer as it is for the interviewee. Yes, uh, both individuals are usually uh, a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit on edge when they start doing an interview. So I want to give you some techniques that you can use as an interviewee towards someone who is being interviewed. So first, you're going to have a position that suddenly becomes available in your company, or maybe not suddenly. But it, now you have a need for this certain individual to join your company. So you're going to send out some uh, requests to the various media out there and even to some of your friends and coworkers, or and possibly other colleagues in your industry and say, hey, I need an engineer or I need a CAD operator or I need a specific type of technician to come join my company or the company I work for. And so you'll start receiving resumes and you'll start receiving different uh, emails are coming in and you're going to read through those. You got to screen them out. And those who don't qualify for the position that you have available, you're going to put them to the side. And those individuals who are uh, looks or at least looks like they're qualified, those you want to uh, leave on a separate list. Once you've gone through all your various uh, applications and resumes and emails and you screened out those few that are the ones that you want to take another look at, but you want to do it in person. So now that narrows the list down. So the only people that you're going to talk to during the interview are people that are already been pre-qualified for the position that you have available. The next thing you want to do to make it a lot easier for everyone is that you want to set aside a specific time during your day or throughout the week, certain times throughout the week or a couple of weeks, of when to interview. In other words, you want to have about an hour or maybe two hours to interview one or two people. And so you have plenty of time to talk with them. And it may take longer than five minutes. It may take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you think is needed to interview them. Most of the interviewers really kind of decide pretty early on in the interview process whether the candidate is a, a, a good fit for the company or not. If you only take about 10 minutes, that may be all you need. But I would recommend to at least set aside 30 minutes to an hour for each interview. 30 minutes is probably the best uh, time frame, which means that the candidate needs to show up on time if he plans to be interviewed. If he doesn't show up on time, well, that's already one indicator that they're probably not going to be a good fit for your company. The third way uh, for a company to be ready to interview someone is that you need to be prepared to do the interview. Now, what do I mean by being prepared? Well, you need to have a list of questions that you want to ask the individual, but you want to ask the same questions to all of those individuals that you're interviewing. If you have five people you're going to bring in to be interviewed, you need to ask them the same group of questions. Now, the way they answer the questions are going to be a little bit different, but at least you have a way of comparing the different individuals on an equal footing. Maybe have five questions set up, maybe 10 questions, all of which is to find out whether they have the necessary background, the necessary experience, the necessary people skills, soft skills, all the different things you're looking for that that job calls for. A project engineer's requirement are far different from an entry-level CAD operator. So the questions would, would be definitely different between the two. That's why you need to be prepared already before you ever come to the room to ask questions with the interviewee. Never go into the interview and not knowing what you're going to ask uh, everyone. Next, during the interview, you need to interview the, the applicant here. Whether they uh, are calm, relaxed, whether they're fidgety, 
whether they look down a lot and don't have any direct eye to eye contact with you, whether they're very uh, quick with the uh, sentences, saying it really, really fast, which means they're really, really nervous. They're sweating a lot probably also. Or do they maintain a calm and uh, self-confident appearance? So these are key indicators to you to watch the individual, uh, be observant of them, make sure they, they do really fit the answers that they're given to you and that these are just not well-rehearsed answers and may in fact be closer to the truth. Next thing you want to do when you're looking at all the different questions that you have as you're going to ask all the different uh, interviewees is to make sure that you have open-ended questions. Now, what are open-ended questions? Okay, first of all, you don't want a yes or no uh, response. Yes or no, it's going to make it a very quick interview if you only have 10 questions and yes, 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 no, yes, 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 no. Well, interview is over. <laughs> Well, that, that didn't tell you anything. And so what you want to do is have open-ended questions. Open-ended questions. And what are those type of questions? Is if you are faced with this situation, how would you handle it? If you had a client was to come talk to you about doing something that's not in the contract, but he's asking you to do it for him, how would you handle that? If you have one of the design team members is not feeling well today and uh, they're kind of disgruntled. And in fact, it's been going on for a couple of days. What would you do? How would you uh, pull them aside? Would you pull them aside? How, how is your people skills towards them? These are open-ended questions that, that require them to think about the answer and then give the response. That's what you're looking for is how do they answer the question? The next technique in that interview, even though you have a whole list of questions, you want to start off kind of light. You don't want to go right into the details but put them right onto the spot. No. What you want to do is kind of give a, lot, a nice open-ended question. You know, say, tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, what college education do you have? Or where did you get your certifications at? Uh, those type of questions. So that way they can kind of give you a response back. They know the answer and they can be more relaxed. If you might ask some questions, have you ever worked with a company our size before? Uh, are you used to a larger company or a smaller company? These are the type of questions that are very easy to answer. And then you slowly work into the more difficult questions that don't really necessarily have a right or wrong answer, but you get to see how they respond to a more stressful type question towards the end of the interview. The another technique, and it's quite often I've seen in a lot of interviews, even in my own company, <laughs> when I've had people interview, uh, candidates, they get to talk about themselves or the company way too much, and they don't let the individual themselves talk about themselves. We want to hear about you, because if we more we know about you, the candidate, then we'll know if you'll fit into our company culture. Not everybody uh, will fit. Uh, our company has a certain kind of culture, <laughs> culture to it, and uh, we kind of like certain type of movies. We like certain type of jokes. Uh, we like to go out and do certain things. Well, if this individual that you're talking to and he starts talking about other things that don't really jive with our company or our principles, maybe, uh, maybe they have a tendency to maybe want to do other things besides what our company would go in, in that certain direction. You may be talking to someone that doesn't necessarily have the same principles as your company uh, has. You might have a company that uh, is really strict on giving the correct answer, the truth all the time to their clients. And you may have an open-ended question where you might ask them, says, you know, the client's really pressuring us and everything, and he wants to get the job done as quickly as possible. So he's asking you, what have you turned in a drainage report already to the county? And you know good and well you haven't turned it in. In fact, you haven't even wrote it yet. What would your response be? And if they said, well... I know it doesn't take me about three or four days to write a drainage report. Uh, if they really, really pressure and they're yelling and screaming at us about it and they're demanding uh, why isn't it done or what have you, I'm going to go ahead and tell them, yes, we've already submitted those uh, that drainage study just yesterday. And I even will produce a, uh, a transmittal saying I had uh, uh, submitted it. Well, didn't they just tell you that uh, they wouldn't necessarily tell the truth to a client? And in your company principles, 
are that you always be honest and truthful to your client and you and they're not on the same page. Well, that's a clear indicator that that individual may not be a good fit for your company. Now, now another important technique that you need to be doing during an interview as an interviewer is that all those questions that were given out that we already predetermined what they were going to be, well, we need to jot down notes for each candidate as they answer those questions. How did they respond? Were they comfortable? Did they sweat? Did they were, were they fidgety? Did they look unsure of themselves? Did they look uh, um, not quite uh, capable of handling that situation? Or maybe the opposite. They were very confident, very straightforward. They gave exactly the answer we were looking for, or at least in the close proximity of it. They were extremely knowledgeable in their field of engineering. Those are the responses you want to put down on those answers as they give them for each of your questions. And now you have an equal way of comparing those candidates. You take a look at how they responded. And if too many go the wrong way, well, they get pushed to another pile. And eventually you have maybe one or two candidates that may be the perfect match for your company. The next uh, technique that you should always do after an interview, maybe a day or two later, you want to give a, a, a follow-up uh, with those individuals. The ones especially that you really are thinking about bringing to your company. You may want to leave them a phone call, uh, give them a call, leave a message on their phone, or maybe even talk to them in person. You may want to send them an email or a letter or something. Whether uh, you're not going to hire them or not, but at least say, you know, we really appreciate uh, you coming out to our company and, and uh, interviewing with us. So you want to leave a response with those individuals so that way they don't have to wait too long. Maybe they want to decide to go on to another company or talk to someone else or, or find employment somewhere else. But if you don't get to them in a, in a timely manner, they're going to wait around and maybe miss another opportunity to work somewhere else. So always do a follow-up and, and let them know whether they are going to be hired or not. Another technique to take a look at when you're going to be uh, interviewing different candidates is to bring in other people into the meeting. Not just yourself all the time, but maybe bring in a staff member or maybe bring in your project engineer or your even your project manager or what have you, bring people into the meeting so they can see how you conduct a meeting, uh, especially an interview type meeting. You want to train them so that in the future, they can do the interviews for you. You don't have to go do it. And uh, they've watched you do it several times. So now they can do it. You might even do it, let's say after three or four interviews, let them take over the interview and let them ask the questions and let them get the responses and jot down the notes on the paper. And you can kind of sit back and observe them. And then after the uh, interview, then you can kind of sit back and kind of give them some critique and say how you can do that a little bit better in the future on the next interview that you get to do. Now, uh, one of the last techniques is to make sure you don't ask certain questions, okay? Certain questions are illegal to ask any interviewer. And uh, if you do ask them and they can then bring you up <laughs> on uh, charges, criminal charges or what have you, and you can get in a whole lot of trouble. So what are some of those questions? Well, one, you can't ask whether they're married or not. You can't ask whether they uh, what race they are. You can't ask what creed they are. Uh, you can't ask about their sexual orientation can't ask what gender they are. They can't ask what uh, uh, what faith they are, whether they're religious or not. All these type of questions, you can't ask them. Uh, now, of course, it, they may say it inadvertently during the meeting, but you yourself cannot say, are you married? How many children you have? Because those questions are not allowed and uh, you get yourself in a world hurt <laughs> in a courtroom and you don't want to do that especially when you're trying to hire somebody to try to uh, increase your profits in your company, and then you end up giving that all to a lawyer in a courtroom. So don't do that. Now, something that's happened over the past uh, year and a half, maybe two years, is, well, because of the pandemic, we all learned to do a little uh, use of virtual meetings, such as what, uh, like Zoom or GoToMeeting or Google Meets or all these other types. We do virtual a lot. So some of the new trends and how people are being interviewed now is through virtual uh, meetings. And in these virtual meetings, you'll find people are probably given a test. They're probably given a essay so that they can respond and then send that back so they can take a look at it. 
A test would be a series of questions and see how they answer those questions. So there's a couple different new trends in how interviews are done now because the reason you not always can get together in person, you have to do it virtually. And so this is some of the new techniques that are coming out in interviews. But whenever you have a chance, always do an interview in person. It is the best way to do it because you get to see whether the person shows up on time. You get to see to see how confident the person is in person. You get to see the person himself and how he handles himself around others. So always first choice in person uh, interviews. And if you have to, well, we can always do it virtually. I know you've gotten a lot of value out of this uh, uh, video. I've taught a lot of different techniques on how to do an interview. The main thing is you yourself need to show confidence in yourself and in your company and then watch the person you're interviewing and see if they have confidence in themselves and whether they would be a good fit for your company. Follow those techniques and you'll get the right employee for your company. So if you want to see more videos like this, you want to go right down below right there and, and subscribe to our channel. Also hit that like bell so that we know that we're good, doing a good job. So until the next video, keep on learning to be a better engineer and keep on learning to be a better manager in the business of engineering. See you on the next video.